Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the Golden Opportunities Coaching YouTube channel. Welcome to those of you who are new. Welcome back to those of you seasoned veterans of what we do around here. What we do around here is bring about conversations on a variety of social, psychological, and coaching related topics. We do that as often as we can. Pretty well hidden daily most days these days. Uh, better than we used to be. So if you are looking for a way to change your life and to kind of handle how you speak in public, which is today's topic, differently. Uh, I'd love to be of service to you in 2021. The best way to do that is to get in contact with me either through Twitter at PO Perception or through the About Me section of this particular page. And in the About Me section is my website. You can go there, check it out, all that good stuff. So there's six things I want to talk about, um, you know, that people, or actually five things that I want to talk about that people shouldn't say. And so the first is, I'll try. Try doesn't exist, and people really uh, don't like that. But try is just an excuse, and it's an out for when uh, you don't follow through. And so you either do something or you don't do it. You can't try to eat dinner. You either eat or you don't. You can't try to go for a walk. You either do or you don't. And so the... The elimination of the word try is about respecting a person's uh, reality. It's better to say, I don't know if I can do this because of my schedule. I don't know if I can do this because I'm not really that interested. I don't know. At least I don't know gives a person a chance that you may walk away. When you try and you fail, people automatically lo you lose credibility with people. You lose credibility for future asks. And so it's, it's counterproductive to do that. So... The next thing is um, the word can't. I can't do this. I can't do that. The more honest answer is I won't because I'm focused on something else. I can't make time for you this week. No, I won't because things matter more to me. I can't come to your party. No, I won't because I have other engagements. It's better to say won't than can't even though it's not more popular because the truth is you can choose to do anything you want to do but that doesn't necessarily mean that ultimately you are, um, you know, choosing one thing over another. Now, if you're honest and you say, you know what, I've, I've got limited time or I've got limited focus, or I've got limited energy and I'm choosing this over that. At least a person is, is being honest with and they know, hey, this person's already overextended. Maybe I should be careful about how often I ask them things. When you say you can't do something... People will come back to you later and then get more frustrated when you refuse them again and again and again. So it's, it's more just about being transparent. The next is saying you quit something in front of other people. Look, we, we've all had moments or, or situations where we need to quit or leave something behind. It wasn't working for us. We didn't have time for it anymore. We weren't, didn't have an affinity for it. We weren't good at it. Whatever it is, there's lots of reasons that uh, we have to quit or we choose to quit trouble is quitting in front of other people either makes us look weak like we, we weren't fully engaged to begin with or like we're looking for sympathy which is the bigger one why are you looking for sympathy why are you seeking to gain attention by saying i quit in front of other people if you're going to quit at something do it quietly and if you have to tell other people hey i need to step away from this then it should be a sentence, not this huge explanation, where you make a bunch of excuses. Look, you can make excuses or you can make history. You can't do both at the same time. And if you give yourself a bunch of reasons to make rationalizations, you'll never grow to be the person who's more accountable to how you choose your words effectively and efficiently. Uh, the, the, the next one that's, that's really important is, it's not my fault. Look, it, at the end of the day, that's just shik shirking blame and, and uh, uh, shirking, shirking responsibility. It doesn't matter whose fault it is that something doesn't get done. What matters is did it get done or not, and am I responsible for it not getting done? Now, if, if you can honestly say, look, this wasn't my responsibility based on my understanding, and therefore I believe another person was responsible for this, and you can trace it back, then, you know, that's different. But there's a difference between not my responsibility and not my fault. 
Fault implies that a person could have made other choices which ultimately would have led to different realities and different experiences. Fault is something that's really uh, interesting to kind of work through. The next is talking about being tired or asking if someone's tired. We're all overextended. And, you know, when you say I'm tired or are you tired, can you make a person feel better? Probably not unless you give them a shot of caffeine or some sort of pick-me-up. And is it going to make you feel better for them to empathize with you? It might make you feel better for 30 seconds, but at the end of the day, somebody else agreeing that you look tired or are tired or you agreeing with them isn't going to change your circumstances of tiredness. So it's wasted energy to have that conversation. And so hopefully this is helpful. I encourage you to keep your feet on the ground, your mind in the moment. Until next time, everybody.